So I first connected with fishing when I was a little kid, about six or seven years old. At the time, my grandfather uh, was in an old people's home in Newbury and the river ran right past the outside of the building. And I found a load of fishing kit at the back of the garage that belonged to my brother. Uh, nicked it, went to the river, uh, cobbled something together, went fishing and I think probably didn't catch anything at all. And as I kept going back to the, the same location, I found a couple of other sort of slightly older lads who were obviously anglers who knew what they were doing and they showed me how to do some presentation, how to tie a float on, how to present some bait. And I remember the day when I caught my very first fish, which was a roach. Uh, I've never forgotten that moment. It was probably only that big, but to me, it felt like it was enormous. Uh, and I've never ever forgotten that day. And that was my unforgettable connection with fishing. So I started working as a journalist when I was 17 years old, working for the local newspaper. Ended up, to cut a long story short, working in television for Sky Sports. And at the time, Sky ran a fishing programme called Tight Lines, which I'm sure a lot of people remember very fondly. And one day I was working on the news desk at Sky Sports News, sent an email to a chap called Mick Brace, who was the producer of Tight Lines on Sky Sports, asking if he needed a reporter to do any bits and pieces of filming. And luckily for me, he did. Um, he offered me the chance to go and make a film for him. They really liked it. And within three or four weeks later, I was out in Hungary covering the World Championships of all things. And I've never really looked back. I've loved making film about fishing ever since. So to me, the whole thing about making films is about telling stories. And stories, to me, are about people. And the world of fishing is full of fascinating people. You're never short of ideas because there's always somebody interesting just around the corner. Every single angler out there has got a story to tell. Either it's about the place they go and the reason they're connected to it, the adventure they're on, the difficulties they're having and how fishing helps them to get out of the other side. It's just one of those sports that has so much going for it. And to me, if you can tell those stories about people, you'll always have great ideas to make films. If you look around in this incredible environment we're in today, this is the upper waters of the River Itchen in Hampshire. You can see that wildlife is teeming from every single pore. How can you not, as an angler, be involved in the conservation story? You know, this is in our soul. This sort of environment where you see things hatching, you see mayflies, you see little olives, you see fantastic, gorgeous little trout and in the winter we go and we crunch our way through the puddles and jump into freezing cold rivers. The conservation side of things is so important because if we don't look after the environments we're in they simply won't be there anymore and there are so many challenges now with predation, with population growth and cities and towns expanding to fill the gaps left in the countryside, with pressure from all sorts of things to do with pollution. So conservation is central to the message that we always have to tell as anglers. If we don't look after the waters that we fish, they won't be here for generations to come. You ask about the impact that the media has on angling. Well, I'm going to flip that round in completely the opposite direction and ask what the impact angling should have on the media. Because for me, I don't think angling promotes itself well enough. We've got so many fantastic things going on, we need to be banging the drum really loudly. The only way to do that is to show the media what we can do, because we know that we're in environments like this. Everything is leading towards people spending more time outside in fantastic places like I'm standing at the moment. You know, if we can really push the message, message home to the media and tell people what angling can do, then surely our sport will grow and thrive for the future. I count myself really lucky that I get to do this, or certainly partly do this for a living because, you know, I'm an angler out and out. I was an angler before I was a journalist. I started telling stories, writing stuff in newspapers and making TV programs after I started fishing. I then spent quite a long time as a, as a journalist writing stories about all sorts of other things, football, cricket, you name it. And then I came back to telling stories about fishing. I already love being in this environment, so for me, I don't need a purpose to be out here. My purpose is that I love the outside world. I love standing in the river. I love casting flies and catching trout. So I don't actually need any much more than a purpose to be in a fantastic environment like this one. 
I suppose all anglers are driven by the message that we've got to look after the environment we're in. The ecology of this is really delicate. I'm standing in a chalk stream. You know, I suppose we take these a little bit for granted because we live in the south of England and we've got lots, the Itchin, the Test, the Meon, etc. But actually, this, this is our Great Barrier Reef. This is the area that we have to protect. We have to look after it to make sure that it doesn't get polluted, that people don't build too many houses on it, that people don't put up salad washing plants and chuck loads of silt and muck into the river and destroy this delicate, and it is a delicate environment. Without knowing what the ecology does, without turning over rocks in the river and seeing what lives here, without catching the fantastic brown trout that live in this wonderful environment, we can't understand what a delicate balance there is. And if we allow other people to interfere with that delicate balance, then we're really letting down future generations. So a couple of years ago, I managed to get myself an England cap, which was a fantastic achievement. Fishing in the England Rivers team, we got a silver medal in the Home International. So as achievements go, they don't get much bigger than that, do they? But for me, there's something else going on because I think one of the biggest missions we need to perform as anglers is to pass on that message how great fishing can be. So in terms of looking forward, what I would like to achieve, I think I'd probably like to spend a lot more time fishing in lovely environments like this with my son. Um, he's 23 now and he's coming back to fishing having not done it for quite a long time. So I'd like to spend a bit more time doing that. Last year, I even persuaded my wife to come and join me fishing and we spent a fantastic day on the river test. She even caught a really nice big grayling. So I think that's probably what I'd like to achieve going forward, to bang the drum, to try to get more people involved in our fantastic sport, because it is fantastic. And the more people we can spread that message to, the stronger the sport becomes. People learn about stuff in very different ways. And one of the things that I think um, is another job that I can do working in TV and making films about our sport is to show a visual message because the visual side of things is how a lot of people catch on. You know, it's all very well writing big documents and shoving them in people's faces, but actually showing people what fishing is all about, not just chucking a line and seeing a fish on the end of it, but the stories around it and the stories around the people that fishing has, has managed to encapsulate as it goes through is so, so important. You know, this environment around us is stunning and it doesn't matter how many brilliantly written poetic words you throw down on a page there's no substitute for actually seeing it standing here in the river seeing the sun go down the golden light in the trees a beautiful environment it's a really really powerful thing Well, I suppose the easy message for viewers of On The Bank is that there's an awful lot more to come. BT Sport seem to love us for some bit, really strange reason best known to themselves. Um, I think lots of people really enjoy watching the programme, which is such an amazingly uh, gratifying thing. It really does make me very proud indeed. Um, Husey and I really enjoy fishing with and often against each other in our battles for the On The Bank pound, so you can expect to see an awful lot more of that coming too. <laughs> I think I've been really lucky in terms of who I can get my inspiration from because since 2007 when I first started making films about angling for Sky, I've filmed with some of the best anglers in the world. You know, my first proper job working for Sky Sports was filming the World Championships when Alan Scott Horn won his fifth world title. And the England team that I then followed for about the next seven or eight years, some of them are now really good pals of mine. I suppose one of my biggest inspirations would be a guy called Des Ship. Now, if you're a fly fisherman, you probably don't know Des, but I'll tell you what, if you're a matchman, he's probably one of the best in the world. Nobody wants to fish against Des. He's won hundreds of thousands of pounds on the match circuit. Um, in terms of fly fishing, um, I started fishing in competitions a few years ago and met some really interesting people. Um, fishing on the River Dee in the European Grayling Championships, encountered a guy called Ben Bangham who taught me how to fish the French leader, which is what I then used to get myself through the qualifying process and into the England team. So Ben's definitely in, an inspiration. Um, people like Phil Dixon have really helped me along the way. His dad, Martin, uh, was the England manager in the European Champions at the Championships at the time. Phil's a fantastic angler. His determination and hard work, actually, the amount of hard work he puts in um, really does defy belief when you see him on the river. He leaves no stone unturned. There really are so many different people, so to single one person out would be wrong. Uh, but I suppose ultimately, I fish because I love it. Um, my inspiration comes not 
necessarily from the people, but from the environments I fish in. And uh, yeah, really love fishing on places like this. Fantastic piece of the River Itchen. There's a fish rising in the pool above. I've got to tie a dry fly on and have a little go. Thanks for watching.